All right, what's up everyone? We've got a slightly different type of video this week. I've got a massive holiday coming up. We've only got a couple of days off left between now and then. So there's going to be no full game hunting days because I've just got too much to do and too much to get organised. But I do have a few little errands to run today. So we're going to do the rounds, jump into local charity shops, and I'm going to take you with me on a few of the other stops that we have to do as well. Now we will take a little bit of time to come up to the game room later on and have a look through some of the stuff that I've started sorting from the box that we got from Jason last week. I've sort of organised the games into the pile of stuff that we're going to keep. I have a few little accessories that I picked up online just to kind of complete a few of the bits and pieces that we got. And I sold something on the advert shop as well. So we need to grab that while we're up here, get that into an envelope and get that posted while we're out and about. So I'm gonna grab that and get moving. I've already wasted the first hour today, probably stayed in bed a little bit too long. So let's get cracking, let's get out there and let's get on with our day. So just grabbing this from our deck pile here. The game we sold was a copy of Lego Dimensions on the Xbox One. Sold this for a tenner. I think we paid like a euro for it in the charity shop. So that was a decent come up, but we get this boxed off now and get out of here. Just need to grab an envelope for this thing. Oh, envelope's too small. Is that too big? There we go. That was perfect. And throw a couple of stickers and a business card in. Extra layer of tape down just to be safe. And we just grab an old digital stamp here and then we are good to go. Now we're off. First order business charity shop number one. Pokemon cards, four euro. Should we get them for a crack? It's a PS1 game, feel ready. How's it going? I want to grab two things from the window, please. Uh, so the cards there in the box, yeah. and see the game there just beside your little doll there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, PlayStation. Yeah, thanks a million. All right, we're back in the car. I don't know if I just wasted my money or not. Grabbed this V Rally on the PS1 for three euro because PlayStation One has been the story of the week here on the channel. We got a load of stuff in the box. I don't even know if this is something that we might actually have gotten in there as well. But the disc was absolutely perfect. It was fully complete and it came with the manual, so had to grab it. Couldn't leave that in the charity shop for three euro. Then grab this Pokemon trading card game trainers toolkit. As I've mentioned before, especially a lot recently, don't have a fucking clue about Pokemon. Wasn't really my thing growing up. So I have no idea if we just wasted. This was four euro. There's like little dice thing in here. It's normally like, I think like dice and accessories like that can kind of actually go okay. So we might, you know, worst case scenario, make our money back on them little things. And there's a couple of these little, like I said, I don't know what they are for, but then there's like a little manual in there as well. And then there was a bunch of cards. Now, these look fairly modern to me. Don't know anything, as I said, about Pokemon cards, but we've been looking for a cheap education recently. So this is a great way to do that. We'll have a look through these when we get back to the house. Let me just have a quick flick through and see if there any. As I said, I wouldn't even know what I was looking at here. These are 2021 cards, so definitely modern. And yeah, I don't see anything like holographic or shiny or anything like that. I see shed loads of energy. So I know that we're probably out there wasting our money on the cards themselves, but yeah. Energy, 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 energy. Just all energy. Well, there's a few little random cards in there, so I don't know, we'll have a look at them. But like I said, for four euro, it was worth taking a punt on us, and someone might even want the feckin' dice or something like that. But we'll look up the few odd ones that are here, just in case there is something in there that's like semi-decent. They're all in really nice condition anyway, I'll say that much about them. But anyway, let's put them back in there. Let's keep moving. We've got a couple of charity shops now, uh, the ones where we have previously said we never find anything, but I've seen to be seeing games every time lately. And we have to go into the post office while we're down there to send this envelope off of the thing we saw in the advert. So let's get back on the road, get down there and get all that sorted. We need to find the bottle bank as well. I have a couple of bags of bottles in the booth the last few days. And every time I hit a speed bump, they're freaking going off. Yeah, hello. Yeah, hi, how are you? Oh. Sorry, I have a digital stamp and all. I thought there was a post box in here. You don't mind if I just... Yeah, it's, a it's ready to go and all there. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Thanks a million for that. Thank you. This post office is the nicest staff in the world, I swear to God. Oh, 
nothing new here, just the two PS4s for a fiver each. Now that our odds are inside and around in the books. Hi, we've got two lines to plus for tonight, zero millions, please. Lovely. Thank Thanks, Mel. See ya. Well, if these numbers come up on Tuesday, 24th of September, and you're millions, and you never hear from me again, you know what's happened. Got our thing posted off there with the two charity shops. Nothing in them. So we're going to go down to... We're going to go into the Jack and Jill. That'll be the next thing you see. We have something to do on the way down there. I won't bore you with that. But, um... Go ahead. Would you... Unless something crazy happens, the next time you see me, we'll be in Jack and Jill, having a route around in there. So we're stuck in traffic on the Tonnelly Road here, so you know what time it is. It's time for me to beg for subscriptions. But if you're enjoying the video so far, if you're sort of newish to the channel, you enjoy the out and about game hunting, maybe you're a regular and you're kind of wondering what's going on with this kind of vloggy style video, let me know what you think of this kind of video. We might kind of throw a few more of them out every now and then. But yeah, if you've seen the channel more than once, just do me a favour and have a little look and just make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. I think in recent times, nearly 60-70% of the people that watch the video as well as the channel has been doing aren't actually subscribed so it means a lot to me to see new subscribers coming in it costs you absolutely nothing whatsoever it just shows a few more videos on the home page if you've been enjoying the channel and if you want to be notified of new videos you can click that little bell thing as well but even just throw a little like there leave us a comment some sort of interaction means a lot to me and i really really appreciate you taking the time to do that as well as watching the videos but we're on the move again here so next up jack and jill jesus straight through the airtime roundabout that's a first That come in handy for the old holiday. A few box sets. Some books. Not seeing any games, but sure. They'll pop in just in case. Just seeing these the way out, I know absolutely nothing about cameras. Nikon D70S for 70 euro. What's that one called? Alara. Another Nikon F601. Don't see a price on that. And some other vintage camera there, but yeah, I don't know if you're into these. Jack and Jill are 10. If you want to come and grab them, I won't be back here for a week anyway, so I might have missed out on something, but there you go. Now, our last charity shop today, hopefully, there's something in here for us now. How are you? Well, even Jesus Christ himself didn't bless us with games in that last one, but you look, we have a few more errands to run. Might as well take his with us and go full on vlog style with this one. We might as well fully commit to it. So next stop is going to be, actually we'll go into Aldi. I might go into Aldi. I have to go into Halfords on the way down. The engine's been running a little bit hot here, so I think I might be getting low on cooling. So I'll get some cooling and get that into the car. It's well overdue a service anyway, but that'll tide us over. So yeah, either Aldi then there, and then it actually looks like I need to get petrol as well. So, and as we get back to the house, we'll have a look at those Pokemon cards, see if there's anything in there and like I said go through the few bits that we've consolidated from the box from last week's video so I think we'll actually go straight down to Halfords I'm not overly stuck for anything in Aldi and if I go in there I'll probably end up losing the feckin run of myself so anyway we'll do Halfords we'll do petrol and then we get back to the game room to look at the Pokemon cards maybe test no console and do a few bits with the stuff from last week's definitely not going to Aldi we're in the Kate and Roy we've committed now we can't change our mind although we are now stopped at lights Actually, I was going to do some trading in CEX because we're only a few minutes down the road from Northside here and I feckin' forgot to even bring anything with me. Should we go down anywhere? No, no, no. I'll end up spending money that I don't have. Mrs. Retro Games Ireland will see this video. We're going on holidays next week. There'll be murder. 
Alfred's petrol home. We're going to see CEX. YOLO. And PSPs are going for 145 euro now. Or 115 discounted. That's crazy. I actually think we have most of those under 10 year ones. I don't feel like I have to buy something just because I come all the way up here. Any crazy wee stuff we've never heard of before. Jeez, it was busy in there. Didn't spend any money, so we're still in the good books. So, Halford's petrol, home. All right, so no harm, no foul. We went into CEX, we just had a quick look around. We didn't see anything, we didn't buy it, and didn't spend any money. I'm just on my way down to Halford's now, and I'm actually just realizing that at some stage last week, one of the days, just went out on a little local spin around with Mrs. Retro Games Ireland, and went into a couple of the charity shops and actually found a few games, nothing too crazy. But we're going to pop the footage in here now so you can have a look at that and then we'll talk about it when we get back to the game room. It's just an impromptu stop at the local charity shop, no camera like that. We were only here two days ago, but we're in the area, so why not pop in, have a little look and see what's out here. All right, so just did another two quick stop-offs while we were out and about. Went into the local one there. Actually managed to pick up four games. We're only there on Wednesday. It's Friday now, and there's games there that weren't there the other day. So that's why I always say, just pop in while you're out and about. Grab this Minecraft for three. We're going to get a fiver in trade for that. And then these were all a euro each. Just games that we don't have, so we got them for the collection for the crack. But then up in Kabarak, where we go to the two where we never find that, and that we're going to have to rename because we're finding more games there than we are anywhere else at the moment. But they have this FIFA 23 on the Series X. Price for fiver it goes for a tenner trade credit up in CEX. So we are literally going to take these two games up and get 15 quid back, keep these three for free, and make a little bit of a profit as well. So definitely worth a little stop off when you're in the area because, like I said, you never know. So we're parked outside Halfords now. I'm just looking up a picture of this coolant in here. It just always I feel like more of a man if I go in there and pick out the coolant and buy it myself without having to ask for help or anything. So let's see if we can spot it. All right, we found it. Hopefully, we find it in there without too much trouble. All right, this is bigger than I remember. Uh, engine oils. Uh, Wishy-washy stuff for the window. No. It's tires. Oh my God, they already look like an agent in here. They have all the things up in the top, but I don't see coolant. Oh, here we go. Ready mixed antifreeze. The one I've seen is in a different bottle, but I think this is the one here. Oh no. All right, I'm pretty sure this is the one that's just been rebranded, so we're just gonna put it down for a second and have a little look. Make sure we're getting the right one. That's the wrap is actually pretty handy. You can put in the make and model of your car and it'll tell you, you know, what coolant or what, whatever it is you're looking for. Here's the one to grab. 2013 Ford Focus. Suitable for a Ford. Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. This is the actual empty bottle I had in the car. Yeah, it has to be the same thing. The one that was coming up on the app was like a concentrated one, but we just want the ready to use, thump it in and hope for the best. Like petrol and then home. Thank you. 
You can fill your car with vegetable oil here. That's a new one. We'll stick to the old one for now, lads. Right, we're all good. Nearly a full tank of petrol there for 50 quid. That was decent going. I still think these prepay pump things are a scam. I put 50 quid in there and I swear to God, and I got to about 48, 20, there was nothing coming out of the thing. So the petrol's cheaper there than anywhere else. It's the only thing. So that's probably how they feckin' balance it out. But sure, anyway, right, we're almost home. I was literally about to turn into the housing state there and then remember to have them feckin' bottles still in the boot. So one more stop and then home. So headphone users are having an absolute stroke right about now. <laughs> okay, this time we're home. So I had to transfer a few files off the memory card there. It was almost full and I had to give the battery an out recharge. But we've done that, we've had some lunch. I need to actually put this kill into the car now. So get this out of the way before I forget. Jesus, this was fairly low. I think I have to thump the whole bottle into it. Right, so that's after guzzling that whole bottle. Hopefully that's enough to keep us going. Hopefully it's the right one. There's no turning back now anyway. And we're finally back up in the game room. Now, full disclosure, it is the next day. I got home, put the coolant into the car, and then kind of sat down to get a bit of pre-editing done, just to get a few of the batteries charged and stuff like that on the GoPro before coming up to record. And then an alarm went off my phone, completely forgot I had an eye exam. It was one of those hour-long ones where they look at your bleeding maculas in the back of your eye and whatever else your mum was talking about. So by the time I got back home, didn't really have much time to get up here and get set up, so it is the following day. Now, we didn't find too much where we were out about yesterday. Like I said, it wasn't really a game hunting video, more sort of a vlog style, just go for a spin have a look at a few of the charity shops and see if there was anything in them on the off chance did get a couple of bits of the stuff to show from the footage where i kind of i'm not sure where the video i threw it in but there was a bit of footage from last week when we were out and about in the charity shops it wasn't a filming day just had the phone with me but we actually did find a few bits i've got a few things from last week's box to go through as promised we want to look at a few things there and I actually have a couple of packages that came in last week a couple of prize wins from the facebook group i've often talked about i'll go into that later on anyway when we're going through the it's like a mystery box and a special edition of a game so we'll go through those later on we'll talk about the group then but let's crack on we'll have a look at the stuff that we picked up over the last week or two as i said get into some of the stuff from the box from last week and then we'll have a look at the mystery box and that other thing down there as well so just the five games from last week stops thinking about it now i think i did go through these in the car but just grabbed a couple of one euro ps3 games bioshock infinite assassin's creed 3 and just cause 2 which i believe these were a euro each in nice condition and i don't have any of them kind of just grabbed them because i'm at the stage now where you've seen the likes of the box last week we're starting to come across sort of like consoles and stuff like that so whenever i see one euro games in the charity shop now where there's for the 360 or the ps3 ps2 whatever it is even if we already have them at that price in nice condition they make excellent bundlers if we are picking up consoles so no harm to have these and kind of have them put away in case we do come across a console we can throw four or five games in with it to try and help boost the sale or whatever so but yeah didn't have any of those so we get to add all those to the collection which is I'm just waiting for that to hit the deck. It literally slid through a gap in the chair, but it's hanging on for dear life. I grabbed this Minecraft PlayStation 3 edition. It was three euro. I think it trades for like five quid. Not really worth it too much for the sake of two euro, but the disc was in nice condition, so we'll have no issue trading it in the CX. So just so we get it to add to the old trade shelf and bring a pile of stuff up another day. And then we grabbed this FIFA 23. This is actually a tragic story. I grabbed this in the, this was in one of the ones in Kabarak that's had a, had a few games lately. It was prized for five, or I just scanned it out of curiosity, but CX were actually selling it for 15 and still giving it a tenner in trade for it. So I thought, why not? An easy double up, sat on it for whatever it was, week, week and a half, and I just had a scan of it there, and it's literally now selling for four quid and trades for 150. We'll have to take a bit of a hit in it. Maybe we'll hold on to it. As I mentioned, we got a few Xbox One games in that box last week, so maybe we'll start holding on to them because the Xbox Ones are so cheap now, and then at least we have like a modernish FIFA game to throw in and have a shot of it, I don't know. And then we're out and about yesterday funnily enough don't really see ps1 games too often in the charity shops anytime i have gotten them i'm pretty sure i've gotten them in this same one but after getting the pile of 38 games or whatever it is that we've added to the collection we came across another one this was a copy of v rally it is a platinum but it is in now the case is a little bit cracked up which that's the norm for ps1 games but it was actually in really nice condition the manual is minty and this disc as well when i took it out i can barely see a mark on that normally these sort of ps1 discs do be in bits so really nice condition game for three euro don't think it's worth any more than six or seven euro 
but like I said, in that condition for three euro, we'll grab it, we'll add it to the Evergrown PS1 collection. And then I'm an idiot, I know, I, I grabbed this Pokemon thing for four euro, thinking, oh, Pokemon cards, but it's actually like a trainer's toolkit. So what you see in it is what you actually get with it. So there was never going to be any like mystery high value cards, it's literally just a few cards there, a load of energy and a load of trainer things. So like I said, it came with the manual, a few dice, a few things like that, paid four euro for it. I don't know whether someone is even interested in grabbing it for 10 or not. Don't know if it's all in there, don't have a clue. I said, I'll have to sit down and have a proper look into it, but I don't know, maybe we'll use the cards for something someday. But like I said, just seen it there, decided to grab it for four euro, but yeah, it is what it is. We buy stuff in the charity shops all the time, just sits in the game room, so that'll be no different. So then moving on, we might as well go through the packages that come in for us. Actually, before I even open them, I mentioned before that I recently started a subscription to Retro Gamer magazine, and then I got like a, I don't know if I just came across this myself or I forgot an ad in my email or something like that, but it was like a Retro Gamer 100% official Legend of Zelda sort of story of sort of thing. I actually haven't even opened this up yet. I'm showing it off and it's still in the plastic. This literally just came in the letterbox this morning. But yeah, I can't remember how much this actually was. It says £10.99 or so, it's probably something like 13 euro, but I didn't even get it out of the bleeding plastic. Now, yeah, here we go. Take the best information off the back of it. So yeah, it's pretty nice. It just kind of has a breakdown there of, I think it kind of does it by, you know, sort of origins, story of Hyrule, Link to the Past, the Ocarina of Time are in there, Wind Waker, and then all the way up to like Breath of the Wild. So yeah, it looks pretty cool. I think it's like, yeah, I think it's pretty much just a guide to a load of the Zelda game. So really nice. If you grabbed a copy of that, let me know anyway. But we'll have a little flick through that one day and then we'll put it on the Zelda shelf to rest for eternity. So then on to the packages. This was one of the competitions that I won. I think it was Alistair that put this one up. He obviously was like really interesting stuff. So yeah, we got this Black Phantom edition of Demon Souls. Now I've never played the Demon Souls games. I presume it's something like Dark Souls where it's absolutely impossible. It's just so hard to play and that's why I never played it because I'm games but this is a really nice collector's edition i think these sell for like 80 to 100 quid we've got the game itself there in absolutely beautiful condition but it looks like i actually haven't even opened this and gone through it yet really nice manual there you always know when the disc barely comes out of the case that's probably never even out of it and yeah look that is 100 brand new that disc so really really nice and then we've got like the art book and soundtrack that's in here and then we've got like a nice little strategy guide in there as well so a really nice little set but yeah i don't think i have any like special edition ps3 things so that's really nice to have and that'll look well on the shelf with all the other ps3 stuff there so let me grab this mystery box here we'll go through that and like i said just have a quick look at some of the stuff that came out of the box then from last week as well all right so we've got a big mystery box down here i've literally cut the tape i've literally seen two things that are on top of it but the first one that came out this is one i actually need to address separately this wasn't part of the mystery box but thomas has very kindly sent this in so this is a brand new sealed copy of grand theft auto liberty city stories on the ps2 now there's a reason behind this game coming in as you've heard me mention in uh, countless times before i brought it up in the last video and i'm going to mention it all again now the irish gaming market is coming back on the 2nd and 3rd of November at the Royal Marine Hotel in Dunleary. Now I'm going to put all the information in the description down below but if you haven't bought tickets yet go onto the website now when you're buying tickets at checkout put in the code RGI2024 and you'll get 10% off your tickets. So like I've said before 10% is 10% you could use that money to pick up a game at the market on the day so if you haven't bought tickets yet go down below use the code why not save yourself 10% and get yourself booked in and I can't wait to see everyone there at the weekend. But Thomas very kindly sent me this we kind of discussed this at the last game at market when I met up with him and got to hang out with him for a few hours we kind of thought it might be a good idea to do like a trade-up challenge now obviously this isn't going to be anything unique other people have done before especially the youtubers over in the states at the conventions they have over there but thomas just thought it'd be a really cool idea very kindly donated this to the challenge to kind of bring to the market and see how far we can trade it up end up with something nice at the end of it and then on the facebook page like i said i'll mention where the draws and stuff take place now in a minute but when we get to the end of the challenge whatever we have there we'll probably put up on the page we'll try and raffle it off and then we'll use the money to kind of go towards a charity but we'll do something separate to what i plan to do with the stuff in the box if we put it all together we'll wait and see so if you're planning on being a vendor at the market i know a few of you guys watch the videos you've been warned in advance we're going to be hitting you for some nice trades for this grand theft auto liberty city stories and like i said whatever we get for it we're going to keep trying to trade up and hopefully we can end up with something nice that we can raffle off and raise a few quid for a good cause at a very important time of the year so this is the mystery box over here it's rammed full of stuff so i won't be holding on to it we're gonna leave it back on the ground 
But I have mentioned the page before. A few people have sent me private messages asking about it. The Facebook group is called Gaming Vault Ireland. So yeah, we'll put a link down in the description below, but just go on Facebook and search for Gaming Vault Ireland. I'll put a little picture here with the logo so it's easier to spot. But yeah, if you want to join up, get on there, make sure and read all the rules and stuff like that before kind of joining any of like the competitions and stuff. But I've gotten some really, really nice stuff for the collection from that Facebook page. It's a really good community as well. Different topics come up all the time. People kind of look after each other with like sales posts and stuff like that, where they kind of sell things a bit cheaper to people in the group than they would on like eBay or adverts. But yeah, definitely recommend jumping over there and checking it out. So yeah, mystery box time. So I mentioned I could see two things right off the bat. The first was obviously the PlayStation 2 game. But then this is a Sega Mega Drive 2 instruction book. Now, funny enough, I actually have a Mega Drive 2. One of the few consoles that I have in here that I haven't gotten around to getting the box for yet. But to have the actual instructions is pretty cool. That'll make kind of just buying an empty box a lot easier. So yeah, really nice. And that's the great things about these mystery boxes. Like they're generally a mix of like games. You might get like magazines, guides, toys, all sorts of stuff. So always great fun opening up because you never know what's going to be inside them. So next out of is this Haihachi Mish. I have a feeling I've seen this lad before. Someone gave me one of these and I think I actually picked one up myself. There was a place, what's it called? It's closed now. It was out in Blanchestown. Um, not Home Sense. That's like the TK Maxx ripoff place. I can't remember what it was called. It was beside like, it was like a Sports Direct and it was in the building next to it. Anyway, Sports Direct took over the whole thing eventually. but. Used to actually see the odd kind of cheap gaming bit there. I do miss kind of going in for a little look around, but yeah, I think we have one of these already. So if we do, we'll probably do a little giveaway. I will bundle it with one of our like PlayStation 1s or 2s here or something like that. But actually, I'm due a giveaway because I got all the free stuff off Jason. So maybe we'll find something at the end of this to give away. Maybe we'll find a PS1 game and something else we'll do a little giveaway at the end. So stay tuned for that. We'll figure it out in a little bit. We'll pop him down there. So next up out of the box is this Mod Nation Racers on the PS3. I've seen it banging around, not one that I know anything about. It's fully complete in there. And it's a game we don't have, so happy days. Another PS3 game going into the collection. There is an envelope here with something. Open me. I don't know if that's for me, if it was for someone else. Maybe it is for me in case I just like threw it out and put this packing or something like that. There's a little figure in here. Oh cool, it's a little like Chun-Li. I wonder what that's from actually. It's Capcom. You'll have to let me know if you know what's wrong. It's kind of got a little bit of weight to it. It's sort of metal, but yeah, that's pretty cool. We'll have to put her up on the shelf up there. We'll find like a little area with a few Street Fighter bits to display. But I don't think I have any like Street Fighter figures or anything other than actual games. And I was a fan of Street Fighter back in the day. So maybe that's something we have to keep an eye out for in the future. Oh, I see a NES game and I see an N64 game. So we'll get to these in a second. Funny enough, speaking of the Xbox One saying I might keep the FIFA and stuff like that, we've got a sealed copy of Sonic Forces. Now again, like I said, we don't have an Xbox One, but maybe we've been kind of slowly building these games for a reason. Maybe we're going to come across an Xbox One fairly soon, but like a sealed game as well. So that's pretty nice. Never actually played Sonic Forces. Again, one for the commenters down below. You'd have to let me know what it's like. Um, what else have we got here? So we've got, oh Jesus Christ, me have to drop in the whole second thing. Look at you fell into the box. We've got one of these like 400 games. So yeah, it's like one of these little emulators or something like that. I've actually never seen one of these before. I never really went to the trouble of picking one up. So it's got what looks like a kind of a rechargeable battery in it. Oh, it's actually turning on. So yeah, it's obviously designed to be like an old kind of Game Boy, but with four buttons. Let's see what's on here. Super Mario Brothers, Mario Brothers 3, Dr. Mario. So yeah, it's kind of like a retro games kind of emulator. 400 games on here. This could be pretty cool. Instagram followers will know that I recently grabbed a PS Vita and I've been kind of looking for game recommendations for that. If you've got a Vita and you've got some game recommendations, leave them below. I've never had one. I know nothing about the games on the PS Vita. But we've got some really long flights coming up and I wanted to kind of get like a little handheld. I was sort of tempted to bring my Switch with me because the new Zelda game is coming out at the end of the week and I was thinking about keeping that, but I don't want to be carrying, like we're going to be away for a few weeks. I don't want to be carrying like the Switch around with me. So the Vita I thought would be pretty handy. It's kind of lightweight, holds a charge for a good long time and we can get a good few games on there. So yeah, if you've got any recommendations, put them in the comments down below or else if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you probably Probably would have seen the post already but I know that's pretty cool maybe we could have brought something like that in the end and kind of had like a little retro time of it but, but yeah that's pretty cool and I think it actually plugs into the telly as well and it kind of comes with like a little controller and stuff so like I said I never really bothered with any of these if you have one of these in particular let me know but like the picture and the sound on that seemed pretty cool so anyway I've got one bulky thing to take out here actually funny enough we only got the sort of racing wheel and pedals out of the box. I think that might have been possibly a PS1 one. I haven't even looked into it properly yet. But here's another wheel to add to the collection. I think this is actually a PS2 one. 
again you'll have to tell me from completely miles off on this but obviously with the black and the colors of the things and that i'm going to say it's ps2 but yeah this one seems like a little bit more kind of desktop friendly that we can kind of sit it down the table and have a little shot of it so never really played with any of these back in the day as so the only thing is they do really take it back to like the arcade wheels it's got that sort of like tension and stuff on it so i don't know maybe we'll pop it in and have a little crack at it sometime but yeah, I've got, uh, let me see, let's just have a look at things as we come. There's no point in saving things till the end. But an NES game, and actually, funny enough, this is a game series I don't have any games for on the NES. I mentioned before, I don't actually have a NES, but we've got about 10 or 12 kind of loose carts there. But this is my first time on one from this series, and it's the OG Super Mario Brothers. So this is pretty cool. This actually takes me back. I've mentioned before that an NES wasn't really something that I had as a kid. I kind of went from some sort of weird Atari thing to like Commodore 64 and then straight to Super Nintendo. But a friend of mine growing up had an NES and we used to like play each other's consoles when we were in houses, used to console swaps for the weekend and stuff like that. And yeah, just having this cart now, this OG Super Mario Bros. actually brings those memories back. So this is pretty class. A few of them kind of just displayed up there, but I think this could be one to like, you know, it's an iconic game in sort of game and history and stuff like that. So maybe we'll find a little spot up on the shelf here about the Game Boy or something like that on the display up there but that's a really nice one to get in the mystery box then next there we might as well have a look at the N64 kind of had a rough idea what it was it could only have been a few games because it's a black card and it's a copy of Turok 2 so I love getting games for like the SNES N64 card based stuff you don't really see it out and about obviously when you go to the likes of the gaming market or we build up trade credit we can pick them up in CEX don't think I ever played Turok 2 I had the OG Turok back in the day and I'm not sure if I actually picked it up for the N64 I don't know, but now that we have Turok 2, obviously we have to try and pick up the OG Turok, but definitely gonna find the spot on the N64 shelf for that. And then everything else is in here. It looks like it is disc-based stuff, and then there's a nice little magazine hidden out at the end. A few demos as well, which you know I absolutely love. So let me just pop these on top of each other, and then whatever's in here is gonna come out in order now. So we've got another 3DS game to add to the collection. This is Asphalt 3D. Feels good, yeah, it's nice and complete in there. Again, not one that I know too much about, but as I always mention, DS, 3DS games, we need to start picking more up of. And we're starting to get a nice little pile of them over here. Actually, I'm putting things on the shelf and I need to stop doing that because as I mentioned, they go up on the shelf now. I don't catalog them in my app and I forget I have them. And mm, So we'll just put them over here with the rest of them. Next out is this, actually this is pretty cool. This is an Oddworld Abe's Odyssey demo disc. So like I said, yeah, you know I love a demo. I kind of love like the mystery ones. This is actually in pretty nice condition. But yeah, I'm trying to think that I have this back in the day. Did this come in like a magazine or something like that? I feel like it came in like a PlayStation magazine or something. Something about it rings a bell anyway, but uh, the odd world art is pretty cool. So again, one up to find a spot on the shelf for. Now this is something I've never seen before. This is Max Play for PlayStation 2, 100% unofficial classic games. So is this like a kind of a, Again, I don't know, actually it's a nice disc. I don't know whether it would have came with like a magazine or something like that. But yeah, I've never seen that before. So that's a pretty cool thing to have in the collection. But yeah, it's got a little selection of games like Invaders, Chopper 2, Bounty Hunter, Loop to Loop, all these sort of things. If you've seen this before or you know where it came from, let me know. <laughs> you had to, I knew we had to throw in an old FIFA game. Thomas is an advocate for the return of the FIFA challenge. A few people have been messaging me about that lately actually, so I think we'll have to do some sort of like little wrap up where we kind of go through the game room here, gather all our FIFA stuff together, see all of what we have, and maybe we can put a little challenge together so that when we get to the Irish gaming market now in a few weeks, maybe we can kind of look out for a few more titles to try and complete our FIFA collection. That would be a nice way to kind of round it out and end the series and give everybody a little bit of closure, so maybe we'll look into that. But FIFA 20, 20, 2024, FIFA 2004, I think this is one that we actually have already, but we'll have a look at our own copy. Obviously, we'll look and see, can we upgrade? This looks nice and that, this one does have a manual, so maybe we can upgrade and complete our own copy, but I knew he was gonna throw a FIFA game in there. Another PS2 game is, and another one that's fully complete, is Ice Age 2, The Meltdown. Now, do I have Ice Age 2? These are perfect games for me to get because some PS2 games are all at eye level here, but no, don't have Ice Age 2, so that's gonna go into the collection. An OG Xbox game now, and we've got Project Gotham Racing 2. Now I've never played a Project Gotham Racing game and I do like an old racer. Don't think I have that one over there. I'm blind now because I've got no glasses on. I just talked about how the eye test said I was even more blind than I thought. But no, don't have it over there. So another one for the OG Xbox collection. This is a platinum copy of Red Faction on the PS2. Now I think I had this one back in the day or at least I have played it. The artwork is very familiar to me. But I don't think we have, oh we actually do. No, do you know what? We have a copy of Red Faction 2 there and we don't have Red Faction 1, so that's class. That's another one that's gonna sit right into the collection. 
One that we definitely have, at least I'm going to have a look now in a second, but Medal of Honor Rise and Sun. I think anyone who has a PS2 in Ireland has to have this game. Medal of Honor Frontline, do you know what? I just sent it there and I don't actually have it. I must have this on something. Have I got it on the GameCube? I have Rise and Sun on the GameCube, that's what it is. But now we have it on PS2 as well. Now you know me, I like collecting the same game for every bloody console because I'm a hoarder. Oh, oh my gosh! gosh. <laughs> and then we've got a couple of demos it looks like. So this is a PlayStation World Magazine Volume 47 demo. Again, I'm on a mission to collect every single demo disc. That, you know, someone actually sent me a message a while back offering to send me a demo disc and I completely forgot all about it. If you're watching and that was you, I'm really sorry. I'm awful for getting back to messages, especially on Instagram and Messenger and stuff like that because when I log out of one account to go into the other one, I never get notifications to say I have messages and then, ah. Oh. So yeah, look, if you've sent me a message and I haven't replied to it or I haven't got back to you about something, I'm really sorry. I'm desperate for them. Just Keep an eye on me and I'll get back to you eventually. Jay, what's got on this? Fight Club, Sega Superstars, Juice, Def Jam, Vendetta 2. Pretty cool. And we've got some Tekken on there as well. So, oh, geez, you dropped that. Here's another PlayStation World. This is volume 54. And yeah, some nice playable demos and sort of videos and stuff like that. I don't know, I just have this weird thing in the back of my head where like I'm going to collect all these demos and I'm going to find all the magazines one day and just pair them all back together. It's the, the dream anyway. What is this? Oh, this is, I was about to say, I don't think it's a game and it's not. It's Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within. I actually remember this DVD back in the day. I think it came with like a sort of an outer sleeve or something like that. But yeah, never watched this. So I don't know if it's something that you think I should be looking at. You'll have to let me know. But yeah, never seen it back in the day. It does come in a nice little fancy box. So we'll put it on the old media shelf with all the other DVDs, videos and Blu-rays. And maybe we'll pick it out one night when we're having a cinema night and just randomly throw it in. Shout out SSX class games. This is SSX3. Again, a quick spin around to see. Is it hiding behind Defender of the Crown here? I am so bad for these games. Now I've got SSX, but I don't have SSX3. So Thomas is nailing it with this mystery box. We're finding all sorts of random games that we don't have. And then the last game that's in here is Medal of Honor Frontline. Again, I could have sworn I had all these Medal of Honor games. Actually, I do. I have a copy of Frontline there, so this is one that we already have. But this is a perfect bundler. This is a classic PlayStation 2 game. And I've got all these PS2s down here that need to be tested and get set up. So this is a proper, proper bundler game that we can put in with one of those consoles. So we'll definitely keep that for that. And then last but not least out of the box, we have a copy of PlayStation 2 official magazine. This was a big lad, actually. I forgot how big these magazines were. So this is from October 2023. We'll add this to our ever grown library of magazines over there. But yeah, as I've said before, just love a random flick through. Oh my God, do you remember these things we used to have like sending the code to get like ringtones and all? Oh my God. But yeah, nice little magazine to flick through. Love again, just looking at all the different random ads and articles and stuff like that. But yeah, thanks a minute for that, Thomas. Another class mystery box that we got to go through on the channel. See, so yeah, I mentioned that we'd have a quick look at some of the stuff from the box. I think what I'll do is, I think we'll just switch the angle up very quickly. We're just gonna bring the camera over just to kind of pan over and have a look at some of the games that we're gonna keep and have a chat about that. And then we'll come back here to have a look at one or two more things before we end the video. All right, so I just brought the phone over here because it'd be a little bit easier. These are the games that are probably not gonna go into the collection. I'll just move this sign over. So a lot of these were either sort of wrong discs in cases or stuff that we already have or stuff that was just a little bit too marked to really do anything with. So not really sure what we're going to do with this pile. As I said, we'll probably keep some of the empty cases in case we come across discs. And if there's anything a bit scratched up, I have to do a little deal with someone. So we'll add that to like the little pile of things that need to be resurfaced and maybe we'll try and get rid of all that in one bulk lot. These are a couple of the loose disc games that we kind of kept. Again, maybe one day we'll reunite them with covers. The likes of Game of America is great for like picking up loose discs and stuff like that, but you don't really see empty cases as much, so like, we'll do something with those eventually. So, yeah, we've got folders of empty discs building up at this stage. Like I said, we'll reunite them one day. Yep. Over here are a few of, actually this whole side here is all games that I'm keeping. So here's a few of like the PS2, there's like a DS game in there. All this stuff is it that came out of the box from Jason and stuff that we're keeping, so absolutely class. Nice PS2 sign there as well. As I have the, you can probably see it over there on the shelf. I've got like the, the sort of bog standard PlayStation light. But yeah, this one, I really like the colors in this one. So definitely gonna find a spot on the shelf for that. We've got a few sort of DS games and stuff that we're keeping here. And then let me just move these. Actually, I'll knock the whole lot over. There we go. So here's all the PS1 games that we're gonna be keeping for the collection. Now I know there's two Metal Gear Solids in here. I mentioned that I'm kind of missing a disc for one of them. So we might try and complete one at the Game of America and then have one for a giveaway. But 
yeah, I think there's something like 30 odd PlayStation 1 games here going into the collection, which is pretty sweet. So we have a whole shelf of them up there, and then where we have the PlayStation sign there is where we're probably going to start squeezing these in. So again, we'll have to do like a little sort of a gaming room rejig. But yeah, I mentioned we'd have a look at one or two other things, so we might actually do them here now while we're down at the table. We've got the PSP, we've got a battery cover to fit onto that. I have to find the red PS4 controller because we got some new like thumb grips and stuff to put onto that, and then we have something else here right now. I'll have a little look around, but. Let me grab those few bits and then we'll have a look at them. All right, so here's the PSP that we got in the box of stuff from Jason. All this needed in the end was actually a battery cover replacement. The battery that's in it was pretty good in turning on. So I just ordered this like sort of cheap one off, I think it was like Amazon or something like that we got it from. So we should just taking it out of the packet now. I can't remember what we spent on this, maybe four or five quid. So four or five euros all we have to put into getting this like PSP up and running. It would be money well spent, but yeah, the likes of these you can pick up online really, really easily. And it's just something as simple as that. Click it into place, and then that takes your PSP console that's missing the battery cover into a fully functional PSP. So let's just try and switch it on. I'm pretty sure that I charged it up. I probably didn't, so I'm gonna make a show myself here. Yeah, I forgot to power this up, but I've got a cable right here. So let's just plug this in. There we go, our power light is on. I know I'm not very good at keeping these in front of the design, they just up. And there we go, so there's a fully functioning PSP. So we're just gonna check and make sure that the battery is holding the charge. And then if we do that, we've got a new PSP good to go. Well, I've got one here that I don't need. So maybe we'll add this into like the sort of a raise some money for a charity towards the end of the year maybe we use a free giveaway i don't know make sure and stay tuned to the next few videos to see what we end up doing with that but that's the psp done i'm going to move on to this ps4 controller now we're going to replace these sort of tongue grips on here and then we're going to have a nice additional ps4 controller for the collection because we actually only have one so yeah this ps4 controller we plugged it in it's fully functional but as you can see the tongue grips are a little bit tattered there so Again, went on Amazon and grabbed this little four pack. There's two that we can put on the PS4 controller here and then we can keep another two for like maybe one of our Switch Pro controllers or something like that. I think that's what they go for, but I'm just gonna get these stripped off now, get the new tongue grips on there. And again, just show you how quick and easy it is to kind of buy something like this for like six, seven quid off Amazon and turn a free PS4 controller into a really nice controller to add to your collection. All right, so we've already done one there. Probably peeling them off is a lot harder, but it's actually quite straightforward putting them on. We just get our replacement tongue grip here. What we're doing is we're flicking it all the way back. My nails look filthy just from fucking peeling that tongue grip off. But yeah, we just peel it like that, sit it down on top, and then just fold it straight back over. Make sure that's secure in there. And there we go. Two nice new tongue grips, and already our controller is looking so much better. So definitely something that I'd recommend doing. Like I said, it costs six or seven euro for a little pack of four tongue grips on Amazon, and straight away you can replace those sort of torn, tattered looking ones in the controller, and then you've got, again, a really nice controller to add into your collection, or probably something that will throw an extra few quid value on it if you're trying to flip it and stuff like that. But if you haven't done that before, definitely recommend grabbing those because that was like a two minute exercise to get those on and get this controller looking so, so nice. So yeah, just a quick update on some of the stuff in the box there. You've seen some of the games that we're gonna to add to the collection, a couple of the signs that we've added in there. We've gotten a replacement cover for that PSP. Hopefully that battery holds a charge. If not, we'll just do the same thing. We'll order a replacement battery, just so easy. Just take the cover off, slap the battery in, and we'll be good to go. We've got an extra PS4 controller to add to the collection now. I only ever had one controller for PS4, and I was constantly leaving those things on and sitting around and running out of batteries. So now to have two, I can kind of keep one charge and one charge, which is absolutely class. I might actually sit down and play the PS4 a little bit more. Didn't get around to testing the console, in this one it's kind of a bit messy over there just same with all the games and stuff like that so we might have a look at a few of the consoles maybe in like a separate video over the next week or two but i mentioned that i was going to do a giveaway and you know i'm good for my word like i said people have been donating stuff to the channel for a good while now obviously the box that jason sent in was absolutely mental but i always appreciate when people send stuff in as is mentioned in the last video there's a link in the description for an address if you want to send stuff in and don't go just send stuff in for the sake of it don't feel like you need to send anything in but if you've got stuff sitting around the home that you don't really have any use for and you'd like to see us open here on the channel the address is there for you but like i've said before and it's the philosophy of this channel anytime anything comes in something goes back out so in the spirit of the last box and like i said there's plenty more in here that we're going to be kind of shifting as if we want to raise some money for charity with some of the consoles we're going to be doing a few more giveaways but to get the ball rolling let's give away a ps1 analog controller and a complete copy of tomorrow never dies and a complete copy of time crisis on the ps1 see i think that's a nice little bundle for someone to win so if you want to enter just make sure you're subscribed to the channel make sure that you like the video and somewhere in the comments just 
put in PlayStation 1. You can put in a 500 character comment to mention PlayStation 1 along there. But yeah, that's the stuff we're going to be looking for in the random comment generator. So again, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you've liked the video, leave a comment in the video and just mention PlayStation 1 somewhere. Even if you want to just mention it on the PlayStation 1 competition, I love PS1, whatever, just mention PlayStation 1. You'll be automatically entered into the draw and we'll have the winner drawn out before we post the next video. So best luck to everyone that enters that. But yeah, we're going to leave it at that for this one. So thanks so much for checking the video out. Thanks for sticking all the way till the end here. And we'll see you in the next one. Cheers. So let me put the shoe. I might go into Aldi. I have to go into... What's the fuck's place called? Jesus Christ, Adam. I have to go into Halfords on... The, oh, Jesus Christ. Just to hit the curb. How the f***? Take it over here again. Package that arrived in the last week down here from the face group. Whatever I did, you kind of seen sort of thing. No, that shit.